Hi, everybody. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind of. Today, I have a special guest, uh, Dave Malcuri. Dave has kind of um, been around for, for professional for a couple of years, and definitely before that, he I know he graduated uh, from school from in, at um, BU and then went on to Martin's Level 1, Level 2, fellowship trained, and kind of now one of Martin's uh, side uh, helpers, and as well as teaching with Martin, which has been a uh, I got the opportunity. It was actually pretty exciting for me to interview Martin a couple of weeks ago, and uh, probably honestly one of my favorite, you know, favorite discussions like that. Welcome, and you are uh, also a clinical director at Wacom. Is that where you are now? I know you guys. Is that where you were born? Does that seem like a hometown for you, or is that a? Yep, I uh, grew up and live in Waltham. I, I was working in Woburn when I first joined the company, and I've been in Waltham now for okay. years. Okay. Yeah, I got to make make sure I say it right. I want to say, you know, I remember once I went to. There was a, uh, uh, I, can't I said the wrong way. The way I said it, nobody I had an idea where I was. I think Lemonster, Lemonster, or Lemon, I would do obviously do Lemonster, but Lemonster is where I, you know, I got grief for that. So I had to make sure I try to say the right words. So thank you. I, I appreciate you taking your time and spending it with us. I know you're very busy with everything going on. Um, one thing I've always found from you, hearing you talk in the past, is customer service and the passion that goes with it. And I just wanted to kind of get your feelings and, you know, what do you tell young people? What kind of things do you give to your staff to get involvement? Yeah, so I've I've found that in in any industry, in any sector of business, you can really set yourself apart by providing um, the best experience in whatever field you choose to go in. Um, the the main aspect of which I work with my staff to achieve that goal is is I I look. I wouldn't say I hire people, but I look at it more as like I try to select people. And uh, I look for something called the hospitality reflex. So what that is, is basically like the innate willingness or the innate wanting to make something better or make something not going right good. Um, and that comes with the art of physical therapy. You know, you've, uh, I know you mentor a lot, Rob, and you teach, and I'm sure that you've worked with PTs where, you know, both PTs have the same flow sheet, the same treatment, they're attacking it the same way, and one's getting great outcomes. Um, you know, they're getting patient buy-in, they're connecting, um, and the other one, despite executing the same treatment, the same manual skills, same exercises, you're, you may find them not, um, their outcomes not as effective. Um, so that's basically something where I've geared back. Um, I try to create an environment where employees kind of take pride coming in here and facilitate a length of a leash where they can become autonomous problem solvers on the front line, where if something uh, is not going the way we would want it to go experience wise, anybody in the clinic from tech to front desk to PT to myself uh, can go out of their way to meet the patient where they're at, make them feel valued, make them feel seen and turn the bus so they get a, a much better experience. We have a quick question. So interesting part. So for me, before PT, I had two choices, hotel and restaurant management or PT were my two career choices. That's what I was thinking of. And the funny part, and I always tell people I made the same choice. I made, I picked the same career because to me, it's, it's running a restaurant. It's being the maitre d', it's being everything. But how do you, can, is it teachable innate or is it, can you teach your staff that? Is it a skill you can teach or is it built in? I, I, I truly think you can teach it. Cause I'll be honest. I, uh, I was a busboy server bartender for 12 years at a restaurant in Waltham. And um, my first six months there, I was, I was trash, Rob. I was terrible. You know, so there were days <laughs> and, and same thing, you know, like before I went through residency and fellowship training and established the skills I needed to feel confident with, uh, you know, my care, I, I didn't think I was going to make it. And I believe it's all about, giving people the benefit of the doubt, putting them in a position to succeed, um, you know, gi uh, giving them something that they find value and take pride in and not so much micromanaging, but showing them the light to where we might not all do everything the same, but we're going to have the same set of values. So that's like the foundation that you get to build off of your own individual personality. So what are you thinking plan like if you think for us as a business so we're now going from you know at this point we're recording covid and starting to come back and 
how do you get those how do you get those patients back and as your what do you have your staff doing anything different or keeping well, in touch with people so so two things come to mind so basically every clinic right now is is essentially a startup now right we're all kind of a smaller more agile clinic in your own community where you need to kind of start over almost you know i know we still had patients in the door and and we were we were doing good visit wise but you know i was at you know pushing 350 visits a week and now i'm down to you know a buck 50 climbing to 200. so having that agile mentality of you know follow leads open up doors connect with patients and utilize patients to uh you know reestablish doctors relationships i think is huge um establishing are providing such a good experience with a patient that, you know, it makes it very easy to ask the patient to then go if they have a follow up with the doctor to, you know, be your biggest fan or, um, you know, if you are uh, in a workplace, you know, like uh, someone say works for the water department in the city, tell your buddies, right? Um, right now, I found a lot of success um, kind of giving back in a way. I've always had the mentality where like-minded businesses um, can build each other, almost like the one plus one equals three mentality. So when a lot of uh, businesses around the community were, you know, having some issues, having some hard times, whether it was restaurants, um, you know, different construction aspects, you know, just reaching out and talking to people and connecting the dots um, and letting people know that, that you care and things like that is what, what makes other companies circle back and, and connect with you. Um, I also think now more than ever is it's essential to breed your, as a clinic director, um, you know, the PTs you have on staff, the front desk, the techs, breed those employees to be um, more willing to take risks in the sense of, Hey, this is your clinic too. You know, so, there's strengths and there's true strengths. Strengths is something you're good at. True strengths is something you're good at and you're passionate about. So if you have a PT that, you know, played high school football and, and, and that kind of makes their eyes widen when, when a patient brings it up, you know, guide them through connecting with the local coaches or guide them through connecting with the youth program and seeing how they can, you know, put in a little bit of time because the, the ROI or the return on investment and a little bit of time doing something you love is infinite. Right. I think it's amazing how to get your staff and we've seen, you know, companies in the in the past and, you know, my company, we did the same thing. The cool thing is the front desk person was as passionate as the PT and that she kind of developed that. It's interesting. So one of the things you talked about is um, customer service and clinical um, education part. So where do you equate those? Because you said, did, did your customer service get better when you got better educated? Is that, is that fair? Oh, oh right? yeah. Is that what you felt? So, so before, before I went through, you know, I, I did the, uh, you know, continuing education through the company, I, uh, it was almost like I followed a script, you know, like, like, like uh, anterior knee pain, here are the 10 rules that you follow. And I was very rigid and, you know, my outcomes would kind of move the needle a little bit. But then once I went through, um, the education programs through the company, it, it really kind of allowed me to harness my own strengths. And instead of following a script, more like follow a set of values or that foundation I mentioned earlier. And it allowed me to better individualize aspects of care to, to, to kind of give it to each specific patient. It's almost like uh, you're playing cards, you're playing Uno, and you've got all these different cards, and you know you got to play all of them, but you got to know when to play them. Um, you know, the, the residency, going through fellowship, you know, working with mentors, even still teaching now, you, you really improve your confidence, your conviction. Um, I don't get the Sunday scaries anymore. You know, I, I really mm -hmm. come, I go home at night knowing that I, I did good and I, I served a purpose, and it just improved my ability to deliver what I knew, but now I, now the execution is much stronger. Right. I think it's such a strong, because we see with our clinics that people have gone to our residencies and you got a fellowship have better outcomes. And then 
you know, with that, and we're looking at net provider scores and they're higher. So, you know, it's, it's one thing that you and I can say it from experience, but to actually see it in real numbers through photo scores and, you know, and net provider scores is kind of an interesting, you know, it makes sense, but you also want to see that, it, you know, that it works out. Um, how about when you teach, do you teach different now than you did, you know, earlier on with Martin? Are you, are you teaching customer service stuff more? Are you teaching the same type of material? You know, it, there's, there's been a big swing in the pendulum, more so in university academia. So I, I, I also teach in the spine course at Boston University, and there's been this kind of big push towards facilitating autonomous learning and creating independent learners. And I'm, I'm very on board with that. But you also, um, you know, well, I also have been understanding what needs implicit instruction to establish a foundation of which a, a therapist can then uh, execute, a, execute a technique or, or connect with a patient versus being much more hands-off or knowing when you can kind of let somebody, uh, you know, you don't tell somebody the answer, you just point and show them where to look. Um, and that's something that right. I don't think I'll ever perfect, Rob. I'll be honest. It's something that, <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm moving in the right direction and it all comes down to every interaction I have with a, a student or a patient, I need to self-reflect and figure out, you know, how do I, how do I keep kind of going forward with this and how do I get better? But earlier on, I feel like, you know, when we talk about internal and external cues early on, you know, we need instruction. We need more of, uh, you know, three blocks down, take a left or right, then go straight. And then later in our career, later in our development, then comes, hey, you need to do some exploring on your own. That's the neighborhood. Dig around. You know, so I'm finding that right. balance and it's been fun. And the main thing is, is just establishing sound communication, identifying right. and, and giving a... Um, you know, a medium in which the student can communicate with me and I meet them where they're at. So here's the, so right now we're, we're going to make you uh, just for the next 10 minutes, the CEO of the company, right? So I want you to start thinking, what would you tell as an education? How should we aim customer service? What should we start doing education wise? Do we have programs for, is it the CB? Is it from education? Is it a big corporate cultural shift? How do we get that out there if everybody has that same feeling passion you do? So, so that's where, that's where things are, are difficult. And I, I, I have to go back to what you talked about, about being in hospitality, because that's, that's also a, a big interest of mine. Um, you know, if, if you read up on like a company like the Ritz Carlton, they, and, and we, I think can succeed best by having um, a foundation company wide of which we all have the same values. Right. We all have the same um, kind of mindset and drive to, to better the field, to better those around us and to shed positive light on anybody that walks in our door, employee, um, vendor, patient, anything like that. There's, there's going to be a branch of that that we all need to be on the same page. What a company like the Ritz Carlton does or even like a Starbucks is they off of that foundation, they are then able to modify and create autonomous thinkers on all lines of their of their workforce that is able to individualize to the community that they're in so for the massachusetts people i would say me and waltham i have consistent different patient experiences i have a different uh kind of hospitality a pattern recognition reflex with my my patients than um Tom Mayberry, the CD in Winchester does. They're just kind of different clinics. So same thing, the Ritz Carlton in St. Thomas, uh, the Ritz Carlton in downtown New York, they have the same set of values of which they've built a foundation, but they've been able to mm -hmm. figure out how to evolve to their community, not only their geography, but also in time. Because clientele's change over time too. And being in a consumer driven environment, we need to continue to establish the best outcomes, the best experience and connect with people. So we create raving fans. So I guess right. 
you know, I guess to kind of tie it all in, it's, um, it's being able to have the same values, but in a way individualized. So we are, you know, getting deeper into our communities from a whole company to region to state to then your own individual community. I think that needs to happen to best connect with people and, you know, connecting and staying relevant is what it's all about in any industry. Right. I think the interesting part, so uh, being with the company, have my own company coming in and see all these different cultures coming together. You know, we have, you know, 100 and some 80 facilities, probably have 30, 40 cultures, 50 cultures. It's like bringing everybody to get into that. So we kind of, clinical excellence kind of have our, you know, we've done well, I think, is having our first class. It's an intro, essentials class. It has this in it. It talks about customer service and listening and I always talk about the Disney yellow line story, you know, where, you know, the Disney yellow line story. So it's one of my favorite things like that. And we kind of do that thing. And, you know, I'm thinking as we start to continue to grow, we, we kind of put some facilities like in New Jersey, we put them all through essentials. But if we start to, you know, hopefully as we get back on our feet and we start to grow again, the goal is to have everybody go through our cultural talk. And, you know, this is something we could talk much more about, you know, I'd love to get your input, you know, for that. But, show you what we have and kind of where we're going with it. But how fun would it be to everybody have you say, understand, everybody understands the Disney yellow line in the whole company. Like mm -hmm. I want people to have that. Hey, I remember Rob or, you know, you know, they talked about da 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 or the Ritz Carlton, et cetera. And I think that's just kind of a cool future, but I think that's the hardest thing is, you know, I think for our CEO is to make everybody have that. We're all different, you know, we're all going to be different, but you have a, the homogenous side is, you know, customer care, customer service, going that next step that one more step than we, you know, people, it always takes a little bit more. You know, I did, you always have those base, those really good experiences. So what would you, what would you want? Do you have a, uh, we didn't talk about this, but do you have a customer experience you have that would change how you think like a Ritz Carlton? I always kind of feel like what people, was there any story or something they went through themselves or they've seen that it was, wow, that's customer service. And it's a hard uh, uh, I didn't, prepare, I didn't prepare you for this one. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's not. I mean, I have a, I have a bunch of those, uh, as far as, um, you know, like an explicit action, but one thing that, um, really hits home is, is you never forget how someone makes you feel. So, hmm. um, you know, like I'm, I'm going down again in a few weeks. I go down to St. Thomas a lot for different work and things like that. And I remember the first time I went down, uh, there's a little 20 minute ferry from where I'm at over to St. John. And it was my first time going over there and I was trying to get back. So if I missed the last ferry, I was out of luck. I was sleeping on a beach or maybe on a bar stool. I didn't know <laughs> what was going to happen. So I'm stressing <laughs> out. I think I'd, I'd missed the last ferry. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm running over, I, I'm, I'm all flustered, and I go up to the guy um, at the gate, and I'm waving a ticket, and, uh, you know, how do I get back to St. Thomas? I got to get back to Red Hook. And, and he kind of very confidently looked me in the eyes like, you know, doesn't matter where you're at, buddy. I know I'm going to get you where you need to go no matter what. So, so tell me what your problem is, and I explained so, uh, it to him. And he it was kind of like uh, – um, hey, where do you need to go? I'm going to get you there. And it basically awesome. took all my anxiety, all my stress and just shut it down. So whenever I have a patient come in the door, you know, it's less so, um, you know, the script of like, oh, if the patient's been working hard, bring them over water. Oh, if they're sweating, bring them over a towel. And more so connecting with the patient, seeing where they're at in whatever task or whatever connection or whatever action I need to take to bring stress levels down and to make their, I love that. yeah. And, or to make their hour plus session twice a week, two, three times a week and here with me, you know, probably the best hour of their day. That's what I'm, that's what I try to replicate from my past experiences. Yeah. And that's perfect. That's a perfect story. It's a great story. So probably a good place to end because I love that story and we'll, we'll kind of keep that going. But I really, really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure for mine to kind of hang out with you a little bit and talk and share stories. But take care. I'm just going to sign off. Thanks. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Out. Great. Thanks, guys. Keep digging.